Welcome to the Beat Reporter's Inbox on MLB.com, presented by Edward Jones. I'm Mark Bowman, MLB.com Braves reporter, with Matt here asking the questions. Matt, what, what do you have first? Well, our first question comes off Twitter. Mark, please review the Angels and Simmons trade and the pitchers the Braves received in return. Well, seems, if, like the, seems like the Angels got the better deal. Eh, we, we can't say who has the better end of this deal yet right now because this deal was – let's go back to uh, remind you if you forgot – if you forgot who this was. This was Anderton Simmons for Sean Newcomb and Chris Ellis. Chris Ellis has since been traded to the Cardinals uh, in the the Jaime Garcia deal. So this comes down to, we're going to evaluate this trade some point after 2018. The Braves traded Anderton Simmons because they were afraid of where he was going to be when his contract got really expensive. He's going to make $39 million from 2018 to 2020, an average salary of $13 million a year. If his Range declines. If his defense declines, he continues to be a 700 OPS type offensive performer throughout his career. They viewed that as a a contract that they certainly didn't want to continue to carry. At the same time, this provided a chance to get a frontline starter. We'll we'll know more of where Sean Newcomb is at this point next year. And and really, we're going to have to evaluate this beyond 2018. But I think to to say that, to try to say, hey, look, the, the Angels got the better end of the deal, I don't think anyone expected. Sean Newcomb to definitely be in the big leagues right now. Um, if you look at Anderton Simmons' UZR 150 numbers, his defensive run saved, they're not quite where they were. He's still a very good shortstop. You just have to wonder where where time is, is going to uh, – where how his defense is going to decline over time. And if it, it does, the Braves will – uh, you know, we'll have wagered correctly on, on uh, their gamble against him not continuing to be the game's best shortstop throughout the life of his contract. All right, this next one comes from Chris on Twitter. With Adonis Garcia coming back from the DL, has Emilio Bonifacio reached the end of with his Braves? I think that's for sure. I mean, look, the Braves haven't definitely made that, this decision. We do know Adonis Garcia is coming back. We know that, that Rio Ruiz is going to get uh, be the primary third baseman. That puts Garcia on the bench. You got Danny Santana, who's another switch hitter, uh, basically a clone of, of Emilio Bonifacio in terms of what they can provide. Uh, now he's shown some life with his bat. I, I think that this is for sure the the, uh, the final straw for for Bonifacio. You, you look at what he's done, you know, not only over the last couple of years. The Braves took a chance again the, last year. They were they were fooled uh, last year by him and again this year in spring training and I, I think that but but right now you look at you go back to the start of the 2015 season there's only two players with a worse OPS and that's John Lester and Clayton Kershaw that, that's 160 plate appearances um, a minimum of 160 plate appearances but look it, it gives you a better idea of what kind of category Emilio Bonifacio was in. Uh, look a little bit younger. Who would you say has the best chance to make their major league debut this year, excluding Sims and Newcomb? Well, everyone's going to want to know where Albies is. You know, how, how close is Albies to the, the big leagues? Well, if Brandon Phillips keeps doing what he's doing. There, there's no need for Ozzy Albies. And if Ozzy Albies continues to to struggle as much as he has against right-handed pitching, uh, from the light, you know, as he's batting from the left-hand side of the plate. He just continues to prove that he needs more time down there. I, I, I think that there's a chance we see Albies in September. You know, especially if, if all things remain equal with him and Brandon Phillips right now. Um, I, I think that, you know, obviously everyone wants to know when Acuna is coming. Uh, look, if, if the guy keeps hitting, I think he's hitting 417, 421 now through his first 21 games at uh, Mississippi. This is all he's doing is legitimizing all those. Comparisons to Andrew, I don't think they're going to rush him. If you want to, say, you know, get excited about the possibility of him showing up in September, I'm not going to rule that out. But at the same time, you know, we'll definitely be talking about him leading into spring training next year. If you really want to know, maybe, maybe a guy who's going to sneak in there before uh, maybe the All Star break, with whether it's because of an injury or something else. Look at Dustin Peterson; he's come back from the handmade injury, and, and he's he seems to be putting the bat on the ball pretty consistently. We'll see where, maybe when some of that pop has, comes back, but I, I do know he has three doubles so far, so he may be returning from this injury better than others who have suffered this this same uh, handmade uh, ailment in the past. One last question off of Twitter. Will the Braves have a third straight pitching heavy draft, or do you see them taking a bat with their first pick? I think that the one thing we can say is that this 
Braves front office is going to go for high upside talent. They're probably going to go with high school uh, guys. That's just kind of that's their preference. Uh, guys that that have much higher ceiling. Uh, whether that ends up being a a hitter or a pitcher is basically based on you know how those first four picks go. Uh, if I had to guess, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that they're going to end up with uh, Mackenzie Gore, uh, left-handed pitcher from North Carolina, so, or from the state of North Carolina. So uh, we'll see, but I, I think the safe bet is they will go high school player. All right, we got questions coming in from Facebook. This is from Ashlyn. Who do you think will make the All-Star game from the Braves? Nah, right now, I'd have to go with Matt Kemp. You know, he's having a a great season, you know. If you know Tyler Flowers, def- definitely des- deserves some consideration. Um, you know, I-, I think those are probably your top two candidates right now. Obviously, Freddie Freeman would have been right there in that mix, and and, and you know, almost would have been a shoe and had to, his production continued like that. Uh, you know, through the All Star break, but uh, you know, I, I, I let's go with Matt Kemp right now as the most likely. There's an immediate follow-up for uh, Freeman. This one comes from Scott. How long will Freeman be out, and how has Adams done since coming over? You know, they're, they're saying late July for, for Freddie Freeman. Uh, I won't be surprised if, if it's, you know, early August. Um, they, they didn't say late July. They said 10 weeks. But if, if that timetable took you through late July, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you're looking at first uh, week of August, maybe second week of August. We know Freddie is going to try and come back as soon as possible. And you know what? The Braves were very fortunate to be able to get a player like Matt Adams. Uh, you know, so quickly after losing Freeman, he started off real well. He's, he's going through a little bit of a skid right now, but, but at the same time, um, he's certainly better than anything they had internally, and he's certainly a better option than James Loney. So, uh, like I said, they were very fortunate to, to have um, Matt Adams available, and, and now they're going to have to – you know, their hope is to be able to tread water until Freeman comes back there uh, a little more than two months from now. So this one comes from both Craig and James. What will the trade deadline look like for the Braves? Well, it's going to be interesting. I mean, they could be buyers. They could be sellers. I mean, I think, you know, you're looking at Jaime Garcia. You know, you're going to want to, my thinking, you know, going back before the season starts, you better, as soon as he starts rolling like he has recently, you better trade him before he breaks. You know, injury history uh, shows that he may not stay healthy throughout this year. I think that, you know, you, you've got to start to think. I don't think you're going to get anything for Bartolo Colon or R.A. Dickey, but at the same time, you know, look, Copy got, has gotten, uh, has found some kind of value for, for similar type of uh, deals. Well, didn't have that kind of contract attached to it, though. Um, I think that, you know, if, if they're going out and looking to buy something, I, you're, they're not going to get in the price range near, or – bid for, you know, any of the top starters or any of that kind of stuff. That's something that if they, they want to revisit that like they did this past winter, um, may, maybe that's something they, they do in December again. But, you know, I, I think right now they're they're going to probably just go ahead and, and try and deal those guys. And they have to take a – I'm sure there's going to be plenty of teams that call about Matt Kemp, you know, especially some American League teams that, that, that recognize, you know, not only could he place them outfield, but but they could use them as a designated hitter, and uh, you know over those next three years. So, I, I, I think that they're going to get a lot of calls. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they're probably going to end up being more sellers than buyers. But at the same time, last year we didn't expect them to get Matt Kemp, and you see what kind of uh, benefit that has provided already. You mentioned seller more sellers than buyers. There's a bunch, so I'm going to give you like rapid fire answers here. Who is the most likely to be traded on the current roster? That comes from Isaac. I'm sorry, from Will. Jaime Garcia. From Isaac, do you see Julio Tehran getting traded at the deadline? I think it's a possibility. Uh, from Noah, do you see them trading Freeman for pitchers slash young players and keeping Adams as the everyday? No. And from William, the last one for the rapid fire, who is currently the best trade chip that they would actually consider trading? best trade chip they consider trading i mean it depends on what julio does i mean that contract's friendly but if he continues to pitch like he has right now i think you're still getting dimes on the dollars um you know i i, I think that uh you know matt kemp could, could get them something in return um you know a year and a half of nick marcakis might get them something um jim johnson you know i'm not I, each of those other guys is going to get him more than than a reliever but i, I think he can can maybe warrant something on the trade market as well. 
Uh, from Chadwick, if you're familiar, have the Braves considered any of the potential free agents coming up this offseason from the Royals? Um, not, I, I, had, I can't say that I know exactly who they've uh, talked about from the Royals right now. There's obviously a, a connection with the Braves and the Royals, and you know the, the front offices have known each other very well over the years, but, but that, that's kind of... Uh, uh, you know, as the years have passed and Dayton's been there longer in Kansas City, that that kind of connection is, is somewhat faded as well. From Nick, um, are you and or the team concerned about Dansby's slow start? You know what? I think you'd be you'd be more concerned about Dansby's slow start if you saw it in his face and his actions. Uh, you know, here's a guy who has stayed confident throughout. Um, you know, what's been a rough patch? I mean, it, it, look, the Braves made a decision. They called him up early last year. Um, and once they did that, yes, he had success last year. You got to live with the growing pains that that you you had to expect were to come once the teams got a scouting report on him. Um, you know, once he just went through the natural evolution of the game, we've seen some of, even Trey Turner, you know, struggle a little bit. Who had a little, bit, you know, considerable more time at the minor league level than than Dansby. Dansby's learning on the fly. Um, yeah, there's been a, there's been some defensive. Your blunders here and there that, that you'd like to to see uh, him clean up, but but that that's, it's going to happen over time. So there's been a couple plays to his left. I think just with more experience, um, just they they just got to stay patient with this guy. They're the ones who brought him up here early last year. I think you got to say we're going to have to deal with these growing pains probably through the end of the season and, and and enter next year with the hope that hey now hey look he'll be. You know, he, two years ago, he's getting ready for the College World Series at this point in time. I mean, they, let's let the kid grow. Unfortunately, he's having to grow and learn how to play the big league at the big league level at the same time. All right, we'll ask this last one before wrapping. It comes from Seth. What do you think Bartolo Colon's role will be by the All-Star break? Ooh. I'm going to say that Bartolo, okay, the other night he had that, you know, the, the ugly start. I, I actually thought that third inning, you know, it should have been a seven-pitch inning. Thought he pitched as well. You know, he, he was keeping the ball in the zone. He, you know, down in the zone, he got the ground balls. That was ugly. But at the same time, it was actually one of his, uh, in terms of command, I thought that was one of his better innings. Um, I think that you know, maybe he gets one more start. You know, that we're starting to look closer to where it's time to bring up Newcomb or Sims. Newcomb would be the first I'd, I'd say they'd call on. Um, I... I I think that Bartolo moves to the bullpen at first, and if that doesn't work, then you have to start thinking about wh- where you go. But, but, but right now, by the All-Star break, he will not be in the rotation. Thanks for watching the Beat Reporters Inbox on MLB.com, presented by Edward Jones. Tune in again next time.